sharpening his claws on the edge of the coconut shell. But worse than Ravi's awful woof eek was a creak from the window. What a weird sound! If Rido was startled, MP Punyai was frightened out of his wits. Hair standing on end, he bounced up and scurried towards a bamboo tray of red chilies that had been set out to dry. Trying to hide beneath it, he tipped a few chilies over himself. Meow! He howled miserably. The creaking went on and on. What's that noise? asked Mridu. That's Lali learning to play the violin, grunted Ravi. She'll never learn a thing. The music master just goes on playing like a train whizzing on and on, while Lali is all the time derailing, going completely off track. Mridu crept up to the window. Lali was sitting a little distance away, awkwardly holding her violin and bowstring, her elbows jutting out and her eyes glazed with concentration. In front of her, with most of his back to the window, was the pony figure of the music master. He had a mostly bald head with a fringe of oiled black hair falling around his ears and an old-fashioned tuft. A gold chain gleamed around his leathery neck and a diamond ring glittered on his hand as it glided up and down the stem of the violin. A large foot stuck out from beneath his gold-bordered veshti edge and he was beating time on the floor with a scrawny big toe. He played a few notes. Lali stumbled behind him on her violin which looked quite helpless and unhappy in her hands. What a difference! The music master's notes seemed to float up and settle perfectly into the invisible tracks of the melody. It was like the wheels of a train fitting smoothly into the rails and whizzing along, as Ravi said. Mridu stared at the huge beringed hand moving effortlessly up the violin stem making lovely music. Squawk! There was Lali derailing again. Amma! came a wail from the gate. Amma! Ravi sent that beggar away, cried his mother from the back veranda, where she was chatting with Tapi. He has been coming here every day for the past week and it's time he found another house to beg from. Patti explained to Tapi. Mridu and Meena followed Ravi out. The beggar was already in the garden, making himself quiet at home. He had spread his upper cloth under the neem tree and was leaning against its trunk, apparently prepared to take a little snooze while he waited for the arms to appear. Go away, said Ravi sternly. My party says... It's time you found another house to peg from. The beggar opened his eyes very wide and gazed at each of the children one by one. The ladies of this house, he said at last, in a voice choked with feeling, are very kind souls. I have kept my body and soul together on their generosity for a whole week. I cannot believe that they would turn me away. He raised his voice. Amma, Amma, oh. Sad as whale might be, but it certainly wasn't feeble. It began in a deep, strong rumble somewhere in his withered belly and came booming out of his mouth with its few remaining teeth stained brown with beetle chewing. Ravi, Tell him there's nothing left in the kitchen, called Rukkumani, and he's not to come again. Tell him that. She sounded fed up. Ravi didn't have to repeat it all to the beggar. What his mother said had been easy for them all to hear, there under the neem tree. The beggar sat up and sighed. I'll go, I'll go, he said wearily. Only let me have a rest here under this tree. 
The sun is so hot, the tar has melted on the road. My feet are already blistered. He stretched out his feet to show large, pink, peeling blisters on the soles of his bare feet. I suppose he doesn't have the money to buy choppers, Ridhu whispered to Meena Ravi. Have you got an old pair in the house somewhere? I don't know, said Ravi. Mine are too small to fit his feet, or I would have given them to him. And his feet were larger than Ridhu's and Meena's. The beggar was shaking out his upper cloth and tightening his dhoti. He raised his eyes and looked fearfully at the road, gleaming in the afternoon heat. He needs something on his feet, Meena said, her big eyes filling. It's not fair. Shh, said Ravi. I'm thinking about it. Blubbering, it's not fair, it's not fair, isn't going to help. In two minutes, he'll be frying his feet on that road. What he needs is a pair of chappals. So where do we get them? Come, let's search the house. He pushed Mridu and Meena into the house. Just as she stepped into the veranda, Mridu's eyes fell on the odd-looking chappals she had noticed when she arrived. Ravi, she whispered to him, whose are those? Ravi turned and glanced at the shabby-looking but sturdy old slippers. He beamed and nodded. These are just the right size, he said, picking them up. Mridu and Meena followed him nervously back into the garden. Here, said Ravi to the beggar, dropping the slippers in front of the old man. Wear these and don't come back. The beggar stared at the slippers, hurriedly flung his towel over his shoulder, pushed his feet into them and left, muttering a blessing to the children. In a minute, he had vanished around the corner of the street. The music master came out of the house and took an unappreciative look at the three of them sitting quietly under the tree, playing marbles. Then, he searched for his chappals in the veranda where he had put them. Lali, he called after a few moments. She hurried up to him. Have you seen my chappals, my dear? I remember having kept them here. Ravi, Mridu and Meena silently watched Lali and the music master search every corner of the veranda. He scurried around, looking over the railing and crouching near the flower pots to look between them. Brand knew they were. I went all the way to Mount Road to buy them, he went on saying. They cost a whole month's fees, do you know? Soon Lali went in to tell her mother. Rukumani appeared looking harassed with Patti following her. Where could they be? It's really quite upsetting to think someone might have stolen them. So many vendors come to the door, worried Patti. Rukumani caught sight of Ravi, Mridu and Meena sitting under the tree. Have you children? She began. And then seeing they were curiously quiet, went on more slowly. Seen anyone lurking around the veranda? A sharp V-shaped line had formed between her eyebrows. Another straight, tighter one appeared in place of a usually soft, pleasant mouth. Rukkumani was angry, thought Mridu with a shiver. She wouldn't be so upset if she knew about the poor beggar with sores on his feet. She tried to tell herself. Taking a deep breath, she cried, Rukkumani, there was a beggar here. Poor thing, he had such boils on his feet. So, said Rukkumani grimly, turning to Ravi, you gave the music master's chappals to that old beggar who turns up here? Children these days, groaned Patti. Amma, didn't you tell me about Karna? who gave away everything he had, even his gold earrings. He was so kind and generous. Silly, snapped Rukkumani. Karna didn't give away other people's things. He only gave away his own. 
But my chapels wouldn't have fitted the beggar's feet. Ravi rushed brashly on. And Amma, if they did fit, would you really not have minded? Ravi, said Rukumani, very angry now. Go inside this minute. She hurried indoors and brought out Gopu Mama's hardly worn new chapels. These should fit you, sir. Please put these on. I am so sorry. My son has been very naughty. The music master's eyes lit up. He put them on, trying not to look too happy. Well, I suppose these will have to do. These days, children have no respect for elders. What to do? A Hanuman incarnate. Only Ram can save such a naughty fellow. Rukumani's eyes flashed. She didn't seem to like Ravi being called a monkey, even a holy monkey. She stood stiff and straight by the front door. It was clear she wanted him to leave quickly. When he had clattered off in his new chappals, she said, Mridu, come in and have some tiffin. Honestly, how do your children think of such things? Thank God your Gopu Mama doesn't wear his chappals to work. As she walked towards the kitchen with Mridu and Meena, she suddenly began to laugh. But he's always in such a hurry to throw off his shoes and socks and get into his chappals as soon as he comes home. What's your mama going to say this evening when I tell him I gave his chappals to the music master?